Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless you may have heard the phrase god's hand of protection it seems that it is something god would do keep a person or nation in the shelter of his hand but what happens to a nation when it decides to disobey god's laws in america's case it's not that god has lifted his hand of protection it's that america has left God's hand of protection. And as a result, it seems as though he has forgotten our children. Hosea 4.6 My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. It's almost Memorial Day weekend. How patriotic are young Americans? Johnny found out. Do you consider yourself to be a patriot? No. Um, not really. America has a lot of improvement that needs to happen. Not really. We did it, Joe. America is the most free, powerful, and prosperous country in the history of human civilization. You're not proud to be an American? I don't know about free country. What other countries are freer than America? Ireland. How is it more free than America? They fully accepted these refugees, like, openly. Have you been to the southern border? We're allowing everyone in. Oof. I love America. I'm not super proud to be under like a super strong empire of like capitalism. I'm like a black trans person in America and there's like actively laws trying to make it so I can't exist. What's the law? Hmm. Um, I don't know. I just don't have anything beyond that. It's hard to be proud of something that's done a lot of bad. Name a country you'd rather live in. Amsterdam, red light district. What have they given to you that America hasn't? Uh, prostitutes and weed. China. How'd you feel about China giving us COVID? They didn't give us COVID. Where did COVID come from? I can't remember the country's name, I really can't. It comes from China. I hear Ireland's nice. Have you ever been to Ireland? I've never been. So how do you know it's better? I'm done with this. Free Valentine. Do you believe in God? At the moment, no. No, not personally. I'm not sure about God, no. God is a, a loose term that we created. Yeah, I do believe in God. Is it really easy to say that, like, someone turned water into wine? If there's no God, what is there? Maybe this is corny, but hope. The scientific creation of the universe. An energy, right? There's a force. May the force be with you. Psalm 14.1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. What do you believe in? Living life happily. I believe in uh, anything that makes me happy. What do you believe in? Living life happily. I believe in uh, anything that makes me happy. There are so many signs that tell us we are living in the last days of Earth's history. The Apostle Paul's description of the last days prove it. One of the descriptions of society that Paul gave us to look for in the last days is that men would be lovers of themselves as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1-5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. I believe in karma. What happens after death? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you just die. That's it. I believe in karma. What happens after death? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you just die. That's it. This is what a nation looks like when they tell God they no longer want or need Him. Since America will not recognize God as the Creator of all things, follow His commandments and give Him the glory that only He deserves, He has left this nation to its own destruction. Proverbs 16.6 6 says, in mercy and truth atonement is provided for iniquity, and by the fear of the Lord one departs from evil. There is no fear of God in America, and the result is a society full of evil doers. When we are choosing to hold on to sin, rather than repent and change, God will not hear our prayers, as we read in Isaiah 115. 
When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Proverbs 28.9 says, One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer, is an abomination. America continues to do evil and disregard God's moral law, make up a God of our own liking, and continue to do what is right in our own eyes. America continues to lie, steal, blaspheme God's name, fornicate, commit adultery, look at pornography, covet what is not ours, and take human life. Jeremiah 30.12 says, For thus says the Lord, Your affliction is incurable, your wound is severe. As a nation, I think America may have reached the point in time where God will no longer hear our prayers because our sin is incurable. With recreational marijuana now legal in 24 states, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration is moving to reclassify the drug to a less dangerous category under the Controlled Substances Act. And for the first time, a new survey shows that daily marijuana users now outnumber daily drinkers. The Apostle John used a very interesting word in the book of Revelation to describe society in the last days as we read in Revelation 21.8 and 9.21. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And they did not repent of their murders, or their sorceries, or their sexual immorality, or their thefts. Sorceries is the Greek word pharmakia, which means the use of drugs, potions, and enchantments, poisoning, pharmacy, by extension the occult, witchcraft, by implication, the remedy, the cure. The actual word that John used for sorceries is the Greek word pharmakia. John did not choose to use the Greek word for an actual sorcerer, but rather he used the word to describe what those types of people did in the first century. Sorcerers made magic potions and compounds to ward off spirits and also for physical healing. The Greek word pharmakia is where we get the modern day word pharma or drug. We also get the words pharmacy and pharmaceutical from that original Greek root word. What the Apostle John saw in his vision of the world in the last days was a society ruled by drugs. When the Apostle John saw his vision of what society would look like in the last days, one word came to his mind, pharmakia. Never in mankind's history has there been a time where the use of drugs was so prevalent in a culture. And never has there been a time when such drug use actually had broad support for its legal use. Behind this cloud of marijuana smoke is a new kind of office for Gen Zers. Here, we smoke because it enhances our work. That's our secret sauce. Work and Roll is a shared workspace in New York City where, for as little as $15, you can toke while you type. This downtown loft space is capitalizing on a trend among today's young workers. Forget after work happy hour at a favorite watering hole. Weed is the new way to go. I think this is like the mecca of the cannabis industry. Many Christians use Genesis 129 as proof that God is okay with marijuana use. Genesis 129. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. But they always leave out the last part of the verse. Genesis 129 And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Scripture plainly says, Every herb given to us that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food, not to smoke or ingest for recreational use. Matthew Everett, Golda Moldovsky, and Ellis Sudak, all in their mid-20s, are like the 69% of people their age who say they prefer marijuana to alcohol, according to a cannabis research firm. I transitioned over into cannabis because I saw that there's limitless possibilities with the flavors. And I found like, hey, I don't have a hangover the next day too. Were any of you big alcohol drinkers? I, yeah, I was, I was yeah. yeah. Marijuana sales among Gen Z women in particular have more than doubled since the pandemic lockdown in 2020. At work and roll, alcohol is prohibited, but it's perfectly fine to bring your own cannabis or even have it delivered. Cannabis to your door. Cannabis to your door. No stigma, no criminality, no problem. It's alarming. 
The alarms, as addiction psychiatrist Colin Reeve comes from the scientific evidence. One recent study associates schizophrenia with excessive cannabis use among some young people, especially young men, at an age when their brains are still maturing. The legalized age for cannabis should be around 33 years old when people are outside the window of developing schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and a lot of other things. Or most certainly it should be after 26, once the prefrontal cortex is done developing. Do patients come in and say, I'm smoking pot because it's better yeah. for me than alcohol? Yeah, and people come in and they tell me, hey, cannabis is healthy, right? I can use it. Or people say, hey, cannabis is used for pain. It doesn't mean it's healthy. It means it's being used as a medicine by those people. It's still a drug. It's still a drug. Potency is the key. According to the latest figures, the average level of THC, that's the main ingredient in marijuana that triggers a high, jumped from 4% in 1995 to more than 15% in 2021, a fourfold increase. This next generation is giving new meaning to the phrase high and dry. There is no definitive biblical answer to the question of whether Christians should use medical marijuana because marijuana for medicinal use is not addressed in the Bible. While there may be some medical benefit in the use of marijuana products such as cannabis oil, this video deals with smoking the drug for recreational use. Recreational marijuana use is not consistent with anything the Word of God tells us about the Christian life. We are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, not by the deadening of our minds. Romans 12.2 And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are to be sober-minded about the devil's schemes, not so stoned that we don't even care. 1 Peter 5, 8, 9 Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. We are to be filled with the fruits of the Spirit and in self-control, not baked, blasted, and wasted by what is undeniably a harmful drug. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Satan is the great deceiver. He always wants to help us justify sinning against God, almost making it seem like the right thing to do. Taking verses out of context, stating a verse means one thing when it clearly means another, and making assumptions the Word of God does not support are all tricks the enemy will use to try to justify smoking marijuana. We must never forget that Satan is a liar. We must guard against these tactics in our own lives. Although many people may be deceived by such practices, God is not deceived. He will not be mocked. Galatians 6-7 Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Deadly and destructive severe weather both here and in Mexico is where we want to start tonight. In northern Mexico, take a look at this, a political rally quickly turning into a triage center as severe wind gusts caused a stage to collapse, killing at least nine and injuring more than 100. And here at home, tens of millions are at risk of severe storms yet again as so many Americans plan to hit the road for the long Memorial Day weekend. Late yesterday, it was a town in Texas, you see it here, hit hard by a reported tornado with much of it destroyed. This after five people were killed in Iowa just the day before. And if this wave of violent weather we've been seeing all spring isn't enough, forecasters tonight are warning of an even more dangerous hurricane season, predicting possibly up to 13 hurricanes, an unusual and alarming number. <laughs> Tonight, devastation from America's relentless run of severe weather rippling south of the border. 
new video showing the chaos at last night's presidential campaign rally in northern Mexico, where severe winds brought the event stage crashing down. Mexican officials say nine people, including a child, were killed, more than 120 injured. That same system wreaking havoc stateside. Video shows an apparent tornado moving through central Texas. Homes and businesses in the city of Temple, including this hotel, ripped to pieces. One house, authorities say, struck by lightning, catching fire. Meanwhile, in Iowa, the National Weather Service now confirming three powerful tornadoes plowed across the state Tuesday, leveling more than 200 homes. This dramatic video showing the moment rescuers saved a woman trapped under heavy debris, miraculously walking away. What was the noise like? It's five freight trains and, and you just heard everything crashing around you. Tim Ergish worked with a couple who family confirms died in the storm. Dean and Pam Wiggins, churchgoers in their 70s who loved their family. You sure never expect someone to go that way. Iowa authorities now saying five people were killed. FEMA's administrator touring the damage today alongside Iowa's governor, who's requested an expedited disaster declaration from President Biden and $11 million for cleanup. This after FEMA last year warned they were running out of money by fall. Well, we are facing another year where we're going to um, run out of our disaster relief fund. Um, right now, it's looking like it's going to be in about the August time frame, um, but we are seeing an increase in the number of disasters that we're supporting. There are two key prophecies concerning Jesus' signs of his coming and the end of the age that are crucial to discerning that we are living in the last days. The first prophecy is found in Matthew 24, 8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. This is how end time signs such as wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes will occur. They will become more frequent and more intense as we get closer to Jesus' return. The second prophecy is in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Notice Jesus said when these things begin to happen. Jesus was saying that when you see a convergence of Bible prophecy, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. We are witnessing not only the convergence of Bible prophecy around the world, we are experiencing the frequency and intensity of these prophetic events as well. Hundreds of people have been killed after a series of deadly floods in Brazil, Afghanistan and Indonesia. But it seems the disaster is not ending anytime soon. Here are the countries hit by flash floods. Now in the Netherlands, cars are driving through flooded road, while forecasters at the Royal Netherlands Med Institute issued yellow weather warnings for the majority of the country. The weather department is predicting heavy rainfall and thunderstorms with some areas potentially receiving up to 40 millimeters of rain and hail, which is nearly half of the average May precipitation. A hailstorm left streets in the western Polish city flooded as storms passed over the country. At one location in the city, a woman was trapped in her car by the flood waters and was freed by a bystander who then needed to be helped himself. They held on to the car until they could be rescued by a firefighter. Poland's weather agency described the storm as violent and it persists today, with areas of the country's west and southeast particularly affected by hail, heavy rain and strong winds. Heavy rainfall in South China's Wangji, Zhuang, autonomous region has caused swelling water levels in many rivers, ranging from 1 to 6 meters. According to local authorities, six small and medium-sized rivers, including Sitang River, Shiyun River, Qingrong River, have recorded flood levels exceeding the warning levels by 0.31 to 1.68 meters. Local authorities have also urged residents to remain cautious and take necessary measures to prevent and mitigate potential disasters such as floods, mudslides and landslides that could be triggered by heavy rainfall. A state of emergency has been declared in Russia's Yakutia region due to flooding. Now, according to the Russian media, 16 settlements were flooded within several hours. Russian emergency ministry stated in its Telegram account that 490 residential buildings and more than 640 adjacent areas were flooded. While 465 people had to move to temporary accommodations on centers, the situation in Omsk, Kurgan and Tumen region remains difficult. Emergency workers continue to supply food, water and necessities, build dams and rescue stranded animals.
in Afghanistan. Officials say at least 47 people have died after continued heavy rain and flooding in northern parts. On Saturday, at least 50 people died in the central region as well. Since last week, flash floods caused by heavy rains devastated villages in Afghanistan, killing over 300 and injuring more than 1,600, while hundreds of houses have been destroyed. Moving on to Europe, where heavy overnight rain led to flooding and high water levels in parts of Germany near the French border, emergency services and aid organizations watched through the night to help with the evacuation efforts. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz also visited the flood-hit towns. Meanwhile, extreme devastation has been caused in Brazil three weeks after the country was hit by one of its worst floods. At least 155 people have been killed so far. Hundreds are reported missing. While nearly 60,000 people have been forced out of their homes, experts have warned that water levels will take at least another two weeks to drop. Well, we're still very far from the end of this crisis. We still have more than 600,000 people who are displaced from their homes. Now we are starting to see uh, a sort of the crisis that comes after the crisis, uh, meaning that, uh, like you said, most of the state was underwater. Uh, that meant uh, that uh, hundreds of cities saw rat and insect infestation. Wow. Now we are starting to see uh, growing cases of um, diseases like leptospirosis, and uh, uh, the health minister warns that we may find uh, we, we may see a sanitary emergency after this climate emergency. Jesus declares this in Matthew 24, 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus tells us in verse 37, when our days parallel the days of Noah, he is returning. One of the things that parallel our days with the days of Noah is the unprecedented flooding the world has been experiencing over the last few years. Jesus goes on to tell us in verses 38 and 39 that when he returns, things will be going on as normal as people will be eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Just as in the days of Noah, when people were caught off guard and the flood came, so also will people of our time be caught off guard when Jesus returns. We're beginning with breaking news from overnight. More than 100 people are likely dead in Papua New Guinea after a massive landslide. The incident occurred in a remote village in the northern region of the country. A villager who spoke to Reuters said more than 50 homes were buried by the landslide, with many people still asleep inside. This sounds like a nightmare scenario. What's the latest here? But if you look at some of these pictures, it's obvious that some of the boulders that have torn into a village in Enga province in Papua New Guinea are almost the size of cars. Now, what made this uh, terrible disaster even worse is that it happened about three o'clock in the morning when people were sleeping and residents are saying that uh, part of a mountain simply gave way, pouring all of this debris onto many, many homes below. Now, exact figures are very hard to come by, but we do understand that as many as uh, 50 homes were flattened and an unknown number of people are presumed dead and missing. We've heard from the Australian Foreign Minister, Penny Wong. She is saying that the loss of life and the devastation in Enga province in Papua New Guinea is uh, devastating. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. The Israeli government is expecting a ruling from the International Court of Justice today, and it could order them to stop their military operation and pull out of Gaza. Israel remains determined that nothing will interfere with their plans to eliminate Hamas. 
Meanwhile, more tragic news on the hostages. The IDF has discovered three more bodies. Chris Mitchell brings us the story from Jerusalem. Before the court issues its ruling, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant declared the Rafa operation will intensify. We are strengthening our effort in Rafa. This operation will increase. Since Israel is no signatory of the court, it has no jurisdiction over the Jewish state. But the ruling may increase international pressure on its military operations against Hamas. The petition by South Africa alleges Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. While the Israeli defense forces are still pushing ahead in Rafah, other European nations, including Belgium, are considering following the lead of Norway, Spain and Ireland in recognizing a Palestinian state. God gives the most dire warning to the nations who would divide up his land, as we read in Joel 3, 1 and 2 and Zechariah 12, 8 and 9. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them, in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Israeli government spokesman Avi Hyman ask why such a state should be recognized now, after October 7th. They continue with their policy of pay for slay. They continue to educate their children to hate. They still haven't held an election in 19 years. But it's worse than that. Fatah terrorists proudly participated in the October 7th massacre. Today, the IDF announced they've recovered three more bodies of hostages, the military says they were murdered by Hamas on October 7th and taken into Gaza. And more evidence of Hamas atrocities are coming to light. After a report by the London Daily Mail, the IDF released the interrogation of a father and son who participated in the October 7th massacre. The son described a family orgy of rape and murder on a woman about 30 years old. It's because of these kind of atrocities that Israel says Hamas must be destroyed. But Hamas is not the only enemy Israel is facing. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu toured northern Israel in the area under nearly daily attack from Hezbollah since day one after October 7th. Nearly 100,000 Israelis remain away from their homes because of the fighting. We have detailed, important, even surprising plans, but I do not share these plans with the enemy. These plans are designed to do two things. First, restore security to the north, and second, return the residents safely to their homes. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. At the Israeli embassy in Washington Thursday night, House Speaker Mike Johnson addressed the 76th anniversary of the founding of the State of Israel. He announced Netanyahu will soon address a joint session of Congress. At the event, the embassy set aside chairs for each of the hostages kidnapped on October 7th. And Johnson promised the darkness of that day will not prevail. Sadly, since the massacre of October 7th, we have seen an alarming increase in the dark forces of anti-Semitism and terror and oppression. Let me say this as clearly as we can. We will not and we cannot allow the darkness to prevail. We will not do it. Psalm 2, 1 through 12. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? 
The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together, against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces, and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath, and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.